Small business is about courage, risk-taking, independence, and we small business owners are survivors. Everybody has an idea for a business, but how do you take that idea from mind to market? This is the place to learn. Small Business School with Hattie Bryant. It's a new kind of school. Together we'll learn about business from the inside out, from the people who've done it. We'll meet the men and women who are today's pioneers and quiet heroes. Their lives are the textbooks. Our classroom is the world. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We're inspired to create software that helps you reach it. Hi, I'm Hattie Bryant. On this program every week, you'll meet real people who tell you the truth about how business works. We call the next 30 minutes a master class because you will learn from a person who has decades of experience. You'll see why and how Teresa Zubizarreta has been so good at building a business and why the city of Miami is so proud to call her their own. Miami is truly unique and magnificent from its bustling and beautiful Bay Biscayne. But it has something in common with nine other big American cities, a fast-growing Hispanic population. And it's from here that some of the best advertising is created for the entire Hispanic American market. We know how far you want to go. We want to get you there. Your spirit of accomplishment inspires us. Terry Zubizarreta knows how to sell airline tickets, cars, wax, you name it, to the men and women who grew up speaking Spanish at home or who call Spanish their first language. My roots are in Cuba, that's my motherland, and the United States is my fatherland, so it's a pretty good combination what I have. From her Miami headquarters with satellite offices in Los Angeles, Chicago, Houston, Detroit, and New York, Terry's 70-person team works to craft the precise message that will speak the language of its target market. In an abrir y cerrar de ojos, lo perdimos todo. Y mi esposa trabajaba de noche. Yo trabajaba 16 horas diarias sin parar junto con mi F-Series. Esta camioneta nunca me ha fallado. Hoy somos dueños del negocio. Y yo he aprendido una gran lección. Hay dos cosas en la vida en las que puedo confiar. Mi familia y mi camioneta Ford. In 1973, Terry opened her own ad agency with the encouragement of friends who loaned her office space and a typewriter. Today, she owns this building and will handle 80 million in billings for a list of blue chip companies including American Airlines, Ford Motor Company, and S.C. Johnson, the maker of Windex, Ziploc, Pledge, and many other consumer products. First, my husband started a small business of his own, uh, which really didn't go very well. So. And one day he said to me, uh, I think that uh, you should look for a job. I had secretarial skills because we have to declare bankruptcy. And as a, you know, a typical obedient Cuban wife, I looked for secretarial uh, opportunities in the, in the classifieds. The first um, attempt I made, which was a, an insurance agency, uh, believe it or not, they did not hire me because I was Cuban. The second job I went to was an advertising agency, and, and I didn't know anything about advertising. I didn't even know how to use an electric typewriter because I had learned in the manual. Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, the person that interviewed me, uh, everything he asked me, he, he would say, do you know anything about advertising? And I would, my answer would be, I don't know, but I'll learn, and so forth. And every time he says, I don't know, but I'll learn. So that was a Friday, and Monday morning I get the call that I got the job. And then I asked later on, Mr. Gilmore, who was my boss, Al Gilmore, I said, why did you hire me? He says, because I had never met a more honest answer in interviewing any person. Because you, you did not try to fool me. You, you, know, you were straight forward and said, I don't know, but I will learn. Did he go on to say, I want to uh, hire people who want to learn? Yes. When I told my husband and my father that I was going to start my own business, they both told me, you'll never make it. 
because you're a Cuban and you're a woman. And that's precisely where I saw the opportunity because I figured I'm a woman, I'm 34 years old, I am the primary target for any kind of advertising, you know. Women 25 to 49, that's, that's, the, that's the target right. for anything. I'm a Cuban, I know the culture of, of the Hispanic world, I have traveled extensively, so I know all the little idiosyncrasies of the various countries that make up this entire Hispanic world. So I said, these are assets, these are not, these are not weaknesses. These are my assets. This is how I'm going to make it. Let's talk about the power of being a woman. Why does being a woman, why is it an advantage? I, 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 don't, I don't mean to sound, I mean, I am not a, a woman's liber. Uh, I have never joined a, a liberation movement because liberation is really up here. Uh, I do agree on one, on one of the terms of the women's lib, and it is that we are entitled to make the same amount of money that a man, as long as we know the same right, as, right, as the man. Right. Equal pay, equal work. Equal pay, equal work. Mm -hmm. um, but on the other hand, if you really sit down and think back, men and women have always been told what to do by a woman from the day they're born. It's the mother, it's the nanny, it's the older sister, it's the first girlfriend, it's the teacher, it's the secretary, it's the wife, and then it's the daughter. So. In, in essence, if, if we don't become bully, because that's the problem, some women, because they need to prove that, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm powerful, then they come in and they become so assertive that they become threatening. Right. But I am, I am Mama Zuby, and everybody calls me Mama Zuby. Even, even some clients call me Mama Zuby, because I do it with, with that maternal instinct. Terry's two children work for the agency. Tell me how much Joe Zuby Zaretta focuses on clients. I mean, I've got $100,000 in research and $250,000 in production that can be used over time. A team well, meets in Joe's to office to begin work on Zuby's first internet client, a web portal, Latino.com. Imagine that Los Angeles, Miami, and New York are the three Top markets. Three markets. Most of my job is making sure that our clients are receiving the strategic direction that they need to move their businesses forward, making sure that the agency has enough volume of revenue coming in um, in terms of getting new business, making sure our current clients are happy. Uh, it's really a um, sort of a liaison between the client and the agency. There's a lot of people here that um, expect me to give them direction and give them leadership. And there's a lot of clients that expect me to give them work. And so I sort of have to find the, the happy medium. Industry standard. Daughter Michelle manages internal processes. We really try to stress the fact that every, every minute of your day counts. You've got to show your client this is what this person did and how much time they spent. Absolutely, because we've got in all of our contracts, and we do it openly and we do it honestly, in all of our contracts, our clients have the right to come in and audit our books. Michelle hired Stuart Miller, the company's first full-time information systems person, just 18 months ago. So what did you find when you came here? I found a mess. <laughs> I found um, very old technology, and but I was given an opportunity that just said, please fix us, get us past our competitors. Why work at Zuby? It's Terry Zuby. Tim Swice has been at the agency for 14 years. She has, she has an ability to walk into a room and absolutely captivate a room, regardless of who's in there. And I've seen her do this with the captains of industry. In, in, in hindsight, you know, we were really not, at the time, qualified or, or staffed to handle the Ford account. But I did not let that be a stone in my, in my way because I said, we're gonna go for it. I'm gonna spend, I spent a lot of money in the presentation, mm -hmm. which was an investment. And this is something that I would like to advise everyone. When you are after a big chunk of business, do not, do not count pennies. You have to invest. It's the same as when you invest in the stock market. It's the same as when you invest in a piece of property. Mm -hmm. You have to invest so that you can 
really walk in and put yourself at the same level of those others that may be a little bit more qualified than you are. Mm -hmm. So we decided we want this account. We, we had downstairs, before, before we grew so much, we had another conference room downstairs. Now it's part of the media department. And we call that the Ford War Room. And we would work Saturdays and Sundays and Mondays and, and, and all night and, and come up. And we went in with a presentation that is equal to none. I mean, equal to none. Our niche that we've kind of carved out for ourselves in terms of what do we bring to the party that no one else can is an insight into the Hispanic market that we don't think our competitors to a large degree possess. And, and, and we, we've kind of narrowed that down in its simplest form to erasing stereotypes. We've come a long way too as a society understanding that different cultures and different languages are a, an added benefit to this country, not a detriment to this country. Myra, do me a favor, Spirit. Would you go into Joey Castro's office, the giant eraser, the erase stereotypes kit? Okay. This is kind of a door opener, a first step. We would have a reel, an agency reel, and a little note that would uh, suggest to them that we have five minutes of their time. We think that we can make a difference in how they may be approaching the Hispanic market. Now we have an opportunity to communicate to Hispanics in almost three different languages. Huh. The total Spanish, Spanglish, and English. Right. Spanglish, Spanglish. is... Spanglish is... Yo no sé cómo tú, how you feeling today? But the average age of the employees right now is in the early 30s. Mm -hmm. And they're all crossover bicultural Hispanics that understand both what it's like to live in the general market and in their Hispanic culture. Oh, your mate, check out that focus, dog. That's a focus at that. Off the chain, dog. Off What's the up? Chain, yeah. We depend very, very much on research. We, uh, we, we do not do anything for any client unless we research it fully. We needed to get into the consumer mindset that was going to buy his first new car. Now comes the time to buy your first new car, brand new. And then you walk into a dealership. And when you walk into the dealership, you walk in with a lot of hesitation because you're Hispanic, mm -hmm. and you don't know if they're not gonna treat you right because you're Hispanic, or if they're gonna take you for a ride right. because you're Hispanic. Mm -hmm. So you walk in with a certain appre apprehension mm -hmm. uh, and fear. Mm, you usually bring the family right. to get the approval, or you, you, if you're single, you bring a friend to get the approval. Mm -hmm. Now you buy your new car. And most Hispanics new car have a lot of customizing to it because it's your own, this is, this is you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you may see the, you know, the steel bands or the, you know, the, uh, the um, right. extra chrome, extra chrome, etc. Now you walk out of there in your car and you're going to parade it through the neighborhood. And right. that's going to be the symbol that, hey, Pepe, you made it. Look at him. Did you see what he's driving? Yeah. He bought, wow, he must really be making it. That's the mindset that we wanted to get to. Okay. And, that's, and we got that by doing research one-on-one, -on -one, psychological and anthropological, mm -hmm. with the potential customers of Ford in two, in two key areas, LA and San Antonio. Mm -hmm. And that's how we developed the entire campaign. Mm -hmm. And the entire campaign, is the, the slogan is, your spirit of accomplishment inspires us. Tu espíritu de superación nos inspira. So we have the kid. We have the kids talking. We have this guy talking to them. Maria Elena de la Noval explains the television ad making process. This is a storyboard. It's created by the creative team, an art director, and a copywriter. Okay. And basically, this is what we use as the first outline to go out and look for a director that is most appropriate for this job. A director takes a board mm -hmm. and just brings it to life. Tell me about a time when you got to do something that was sort of off the chart, totally cool. I think it was Zorro. I mean, in my career of like 15 years in this industry, Zorro has been the most exciting experience that I've had. We didn't think it was even going to make it. 
and uh, we, we took them to test and it just broke records with the testing. So then we approached Zorro company and we told them we want to do, we have this idea, how much would it cost, can we do it, and then they sent us to Columbia Pictures, uh, Sony Columbia TriStar, and actually they said, well, we'd love to do that with you, how about if we even bring Catherine Zeta-Jones in there? And we said, no problem. So they brought Catherine, we got the stunt woman that doubled her in the film, we got their wardrobe, everything that was authentic from the film, they gave us, and it worked. It sold, must be. Oh, it sold. <laughs> We consider the uh, clients our partners, uh, because uh, if not, then we only become, a, we, we're only a supplier and not a source. Then... And that's crucial. Yes. Okay, do you want to stop there a minute? What's the difference between a supplier and a source? A supplier is somebody that you subcontract to, to do something for you based on the instructions that you give them. A source is somebody that partners with you takes a particular problem or a particular situation and jointly tries to come, with a, come up with a strategy to solve it. That's where the agency comes in. Mm -hmm. We sell ideas. Right. We, we deal with getting your mindset changed mm -hmm. to buy a product or use a service that you hadn't thought of doing before. Right. So you need more than textbook knowledge, you need to have that, that inner feeling, emotion, that you know what, what your customer needs and you know how to talk to him. Okay. But there have been clients where I have no chemistry mm -hmm. and I walk away from it. Okay. Because I'm, I'm very perceptive of body language. I'm very, I rely extremely on the way that people shake hands. Okay. And I, I rely extremely on the way that when I meet somebody, do they look at me right. or do they shift their eyes? That person has nothing to do with me. Okay, so if we shake hands right now, mm -hmm. you're gonna be able to tell something about me. Yep. Okay, okay, so let's just pretend I just met you. Okay. And, and Terry, I'm Hattie Bryant. I'm okay. really thrilled to be in your building. In fact, when we drove up, we love the colors, we love the palm trees. Okay, so what did you find from my handshake? Okay. First of all, you, you, you have a strong handshake, which uh -huh. means that you mean it. Uh -huh. Secondly, you always looked at me in, in the eye while we were shaking hands. Now, let me show you how I don't, the person that I don't want to do business okay. with. Okay, all right. Good to meet you. No, to, let go. Oh. People, you know, we'll go, good oh, to meet you, and they take it away. Okay, so if they don't want to have any, th this physical contact, if they're afraid of that, mm -hmm. then you're saying, oh, this is it's, not gonna be a potential client be. for me. Yeah, and it's worked, and it also works in hiring people. All right. Because, uh, because again, you know, we are like a big family. And, and we are, because we're a small business, even though we have grown, we're still a small business. And so we're like one big family and we have to, to fight together and, and cheer together and mm -hmm. rejoice and cry mm -hmm. together. Right. And so if the person does not show me this commitment to Zuby, right. because what, the first thing I tell somebody who's gonna work for us is, you work with me, not for me. I am the coach, you are part of the team. I am but one person, this is Zuby. Everything that you see here is Zuby. I am only the leader, the coach, because I founded it, because of the experience, but everybody is entitled to my own opinion. <laughs> as long as I agree with their opinion. Right. <laughs> Give some tips, how, how do you best manage this Generation Xer group. Flexibility is the key to today's younger workforce. Okay. And you have to understand that priorities these days are more of self-fulfilling uh, goals than okay. corporate goals. And especially in, in a company our size of 60 people where you know everybody by name, you know their kids, you know their husbands and their wives, mm -hmm. and um, if somebody's sick or if somebody's not feeling well or if somebody's traveled for two days straight, you know, you cut them a break and you and understand that, uh, that uh, you know, there are other things in life uh, other than being here, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and the agency business also is not a nine to five business. Okay. We will work um, till midnight some nights and come in at 10 in the morning. Most of our creative department doesn't really work on standard office hours. All we ask is that we adjust ourselves to the timetables of our clients. Use your intuition in the selling process.
Terry told us. If you don't feel right about a potential customer, I run the other way. She is always asking herself in the selling process, can we work together over the long haul? Do we have the same values? Can we build a real partnership? She doesn't just want to make a sale, she wants to form a long-term relationship. She also wants the client to take her advice. She truly believes that she and her team can deliver for the customer, but they have to have the freedom to do so. You may have to fine-tune your intuition, and when you do, it will work for you more powerfully than any spreadsheet. Use your intuition to attract the right customers, then you'll probably keep them for life. At smallbusinessschool.org, there is self-help study for people who want to start a business and for those who want to grow the business they have. To learn more about this episode, choose the overview. You can read every word you're hearing today when you choose the transcript and go deeper with the case study. There's streaming video and access to interactive study guides throughout the site. personal note, uh, after 20 years of marriage, my husband said he wanted to see me and I gave him an appointment at the office. And he came to tell me that he had had it with me and he divorced me. Mm -hmm. And rightly so, because I was, I had a lover, which was Zuby Advertising. Mm -hmm. Well, we remained very good friends and uh, during the three year process of our, of our separation, we actually sat down and talked because the problem is that we, we are in, I'm in the communications business and I was not communicating at home. To him, right. Okay, so we communicated. Long story short, we were remarried three years later on the same day as the first wedding and our children were the ones who invited to the wedding. <laughs> and for now, we have been married for 40 years because I tell him those three years were three years of leave of absence without pay. <laughs> <laughs> No, what I'm saying is right. the obstacles don't just come in the business end, but they also come in the personal life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's important. We women, we are, we are so used to having to take care of everything. You know, you have to be a mother, you have to be a wife, mm -hmm. you have to be a, you know, a career person, mm -hmm. you have to be a community. In, right. And then there comes a point where you have to prioritize. Right. Let me tell you a little incident. Um, there have been years, I mean, the advertising business is very fickle. And there have been years where we have closed the year in the red. Mm -hmm. But everybody has busted their butt mm -hmm. to make it go. Right. So my philosophy is, well, if I'm in the red already and these people have worked their right. butts off right. and all, with me all year long, they are entitled to a bonus, even if I'm in the red. Because if I'm going to be in the red for $100,000, I'll be in the red for $150,000. I mean, so I'm already in the red. And so I give everybody a bonus. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, the way that we conduct business, for instance, we don't give clients presents for Christmas. We take the amount of money that we would spend on presents. And we do a charitable act in their names. Uh. And we send them a letter saying, our Christmas gift to you this year is whatever. Do you feel pressure to be as good as she is or well, be as smart as she is? Or? I, don't think that I, I don't think that I or anyone will ever be as good as, as my mom is and has been. Um, you know, the pressures that she faced and the challenges that she faced in the 60s and 70s don't exist anymore. I can't fill my mom's shoes, um, primarily because I'm not walking in her shoes. She's paved the way for, for all of us. The walls of Zuby are a testimony to Terry's decades of service to the community. She gives more than she takes across the board. And when I say she gives more than she takes, she gives more to the community, to all the communities, not just the Hispanic community, to all the communities than she takes back. When think? I wake up in the morning, sometimes I say, gee, I would love to stay sleeping a little longer. <laughs> But how long do but you But when I'm there? driving and on the expressway, I say, gee, Terry, you've come a long way, baby. <laughs> Tar
target your efforts because you can't afford to reach the whole world and you probably don't want to anyway. Terry says to fine tune your intuition and when you do, it will work for you more powerfully than any spreadsheet. Use your intuition to attract the right customers, then you'll probably keep them for life. We'll see you next time. Small Business School is made possible by support from the United States Postal Service, delivering the promise to America's 23 million small and growing businesses. There's no wait at the post office in your own office. USPS.com is waiting for you. And by Microsoft. We see you building a new company from an old company. We see a business full of potential. We are inspired to create software that helps you reach it. If you want to learn more about starting, running, and growing a business, come to our website, smallbusinessschool.org. There are streaming video and interactive study guides. The only way we can compete with big business is to be faster, smarter, and better. We are the engine of the American economy. We create the jobs. Small business is about big commitment. It's about sacrifice and struggle. But we do it because we say, if I don't do this, my life won't be complete.